This video will look at the single leg squat. A study by Kay Crossley and colleagues from Melbourne, Australia has looked at the single leg squat and this is the protocol that I would prefer to use and it is very similar to the protocol we use in the quidematic regime. Here you can see a lady who is performing four different techniques the first one being normal, the second one using her trunk to compensate, the third shooting the hip out to the side and leaning to the opposite side, a little bit of hip tilting in the opposite direction, and then lastly a fairly vertical upper body but very obvious adduction or if you like valgus or internal rotation of the knee. We'll use these standards in order to illustrate how Quidematic Movement Lab can be seen after doing a dynamic posture scan with Quidematic. Here we have somebody executing a classic valgus or adduction squat with the trajectory of the knee going in at as much as 45 degrees. The upper body is tending to go downwards and following the trajectory of the knee to some extent. If we look at this movement in a bit more detail, we can see that already at the beginning, this person's pelvis is slightly tipping down on the opposite side, some lateral flexion in the trunk, shoulders having a tendency to go a little bit to the left or to the ipsilateral side. And the hip joint itself is already in a little bit of an adduction. As they enter into the squat, the knee continues to go inwards or the hip into adduction and this is a fairly obvious adduction angle here. Continue with the movement. The trunk is going downwards. The center of mass continues to go over the foot if not just a little bit laterally. The hip shooting out to the side relative to the knee. But the knee does in fact seem to be still over the foot if we look at this from helicopter view, you can see how much movement is occurring there in the knee itself. The trunk sitting down, not so much lateral movement, but the angle of the femur or the upper leg is quite large. Let's look at this from the floor perspective where we'll be seeing the behavior of the knee relative to the floor. And again, you can see it traveling inwards at a fairly large angle. Looking at the biomechanics report where the tabulated data and time in motion, we can see the left knee going in at 45 degrees the hips successfully going almost vertical only at two degrees, but some migration of the shoulders a little bit medially as well. Here we see the trajectory of the left knee. So it's going straight at the very beginning and then moving nice and consistently medially at, as was said, 45 degrees, almost as far as let's say six centimeters. We'll have a look at that in a minute. And then on the way back, it comes up at a slightly different angle, 25 degrees, and in fact, the end position is not the same as the start position, which is not unusual for somebody with this much of a uh, deviation or medial movement of the knee. So the left knee in itself goes down at 45 degrees medially and lands approximately five centimeters to the inside of its original starting position. And that could be achieved through hip adduction or internal rotation. Once again, just to summarize, knee going in, hips coming down, and shoulders moving down and slightly medially. Here we have a person performing a single leg squat on the right leg with the knee tending to go laterally. It's a fairly consistent straight line down and up again. 
with a little bit of movement of the pelvis towards the same side at 10 degrees and the shoulders tending to follow. The knee goes down and lateral to the foot. The trunk comes down. We see a little bit of hip hitching there, which is quite common. Some lateral flexion in the trunk. Shoulders are very square, but both of them are tending to move down and laterally. Once again, if we observe in the movement laboratory, the position of the knee, there's a little bit of external rotation there. Some movement of the whole body laterally. Hips coming down, slightly moving laterally, and shoulders doing the same. Observe from the helicopter view, you can see that the whole body is migrating slightly to the right with a considerable amount of movement from the knee in this direction. Looking from the floor, it's quite nice to see that the knee shoots down and out, the trunk coming down and moving slightly to the outside of the foot, and therefore this corresponding movement of the shadow of the center of mass it's not exactly landing over the same position of the foot but moving laterally towards the outside of the foot. Looking at the biomechanics report for the right leg 41 degrees lateral movement 10 degrees at the hips and 6 degrees at the shoulders. So most of the movement is occurring here. The patella actually starts in a position and moves outwards almost five centimeters laterally and the angle is 41 degrees. The hips you can see are moving laterally nice and consistently and then coming back to the start position again. The right knee is doing a nice smooth lateral movement and then coming back to the original start position. This person is performing a single leg squat on the right leg. The knee is traveling out at 39 degrees. It's going down, changing direction at the end of the squat and coming back on a different path. The hips are more or less traveling vertically once again going down on one path but coming up on a different path. And the shoulders are compensating quite dramatically. So this person is successfully keeping their center of mass over their foot while the knee shoots out and the shoulders shoot out with a very significant compensation pattern. Looking at the single leg squat in movement lab, we can see the movement of the center of the mass from the center of the foot towards the outside of the foot at the bottom of the squat there. The shoulders moving sidewards considerably as a compensation and the knee going into external rotation and abduction with the left hip hitching considerably upwards. From helicopter view, we can see that the knee is very clearly pointing outwards. The foot is in fact not pointing directly forwards, but slightly outwards. And the trunk is tipping quite a lot to the right hand side. If we look at the effects from the foot's perspective, we can see the neutral position goes very much into external rotation and the center of mass or the shadow of the center of the mass migrating to the outside of the foot. From the side it looks like it's a fairly normal squat but from the front it's very clear what's going on here. Looking at the biomechanics report we can see that there isn't so much movement of the pelvis. We can see that the start position is not the same as the end position. And we can see that there is a considerable amount of lateral movement of the right knee, a little bit of shakiness, and then coming back to the top of the squat. 
the shoulders are moving considerably in order to compensate for that knee action. Should we want to look at the displacement of the actual knee, four to five centimeters laterally from the start position to the end position, again at an angle of 39 degrees. The shoulders moving at approximately seven centimeters. This person is performing a single leg squat on the left leg. We can see a nice controlled upper body. Trajectories are more or less vertical. However, the knee is zigzagging pretty much all the way down and some of the way up. Let's look at this movement slide by slide and see that the movement is reasonable to about here and then outwards, inwards, inwards, outwards, quite uncontrolled, particularly at the bottom. A little bit of compensation in the shoulders, but that's reasonable considering what's happening here. There could be an element of hip control, but also an element of ankle control with a reasonable amount of pronation supination occurring there. Let's look at this action from above to just see how extreme that outward action is in the beginning and then the inward action at the bottom there. Quite a lot of internal external rotation there, very clear. If we look at that from the foot's perspective, quite interesting to consider how the ground reaction forces will be sent up into the body here. You can see relative to the line over the lateral side of the foot here, how the knee is going inside and outside of that line. And the poor patella is probably not very happy underneath that knee. The biomechanics report show a net trajectory angle of 14 degrees. This is a non-linear representation of the net result of all of this shaking with a tendency to go inwards. The upper body looking very nice with very small trajectories there. But let's look specifically at the path of the left knee here and see how it is shaking over the midline, the midline being the x-axis so it goes laterally first, comes back, goes back to midline with a tendency to go medial. With the tendency for the knee to actually go inwards. Hence, a net trajectory angle of 14 degrees and the end position of the knee at the bottom of the squat being medially by three centimeters. Here we have a person doing a single leg squat on the right leg. This 39 degree angle going inwards or trajectory going inwards would appear to be just the kneecap, which is of course what's being tracked here by the software. And one would assume that it's inward rotation or adduction However, if you look very carefully at the hips here, there's some rotation of the pelvis. So the pelvis seems to be following the knee. The upper body is managed reasonably well with a little bit of a trajectory medially, particularly with the right shoulder. And the hips moving, or the pelvis moving slightly medially as well. But those two angles here in particular, because this one is much larger than this one, represent the shoulders rotating and the hips rotating along with the knee, which would mean essentially that the hip is not internally rotating as you would appear to think if you didn't consider the hips. So let's look at that in a little bit more detail in Movement Lab. You can see that the center of mass is pretty much maintained over the middle of the foot. The knee appears to be going inwards 
and rotating inwards at the hip. But there's definitely this rotation of the pelvis forward direction on the right hand side and backwards on the left. And it also appears to be followed by the shoulders. To confirm that, let's look from above. And yes, indeed, we can see quite a lot of shoulder movement there, this right shoulder forwards quite considerably. And underneath that, we can see the pelvis is also shifting. If we just check from the floor view, here we can absolutely see what's going on here with the knee moving medial of the foot and the hip certainly coming forwards on the right and going backwards on the left with a corresponding matched rotation of the shoulders and the trunk. If we look from the right hand side, we can see he starts in neutral there and this hip goes forwards considerably, as do the shoulders. Let's take an oblique view. Just make it a little bit more obvious that this hip is going forwards and that shoulder is going forwards. Looking at the biomechanics report, we can see 39 degrees inward trajectory or medial, and hence the right knee line going gradually inwards, and then more or less returning to the start position. The dark blue line, which represents the hips, moves very early medially, flattens off a little bit, and then comes back almost to start position. The right knee in this situation lands six centimeters medial to the start position, just looking at the hor horizontal distance or lateral distance traveled. So six degrees medially, thanks to a trajectory of 39 degrees from start to bottom 